this is Debbie from Project 39, and I want to show you a project that I did a tutorial on, and I want to introduce a little bit about what the tutorial is going to be. So the pad that I used was the guy. It's a die cuts with a view paper pad. It was made in 2015, so it's it's old, but it's still around. Um, I've seen them in a couple of stores, Tuesday morning, Michaels. Um, you still can get it. Uh, I don't know about scrapbook.com or any of local scrapbook stores, but go ahead and try. And obviously I'm doing this for um, Father's Day. It's got some really cute paper on it, which I'll show you as we go through. So here's the cover of the book. And this, by the way, is a huge book. It's nine inches across, eight inches up and down. The reason I did a large book is be for, because for the tutorial, I wanted it to be easy to do. Now let me tell you a little bit about the covers. Um, now all I had was a paper pad. There was not a collection kit, so I didn't have any stickers or embellishments or ephemera or chipboard. So all I had was the paper. A um, couple of things I did here. Now I did use a, a frame that I had in my stash and I adhered some of the paper to it and this has popped up. It's a little dimensional and you can put a picture in this part of it. So you can put a picture of the guy you're doing the album on. Um, that came from the paper pad. I did use some breads that were in my stash. I had some gears and a timepiece and I had had this hacksaw in my stash for the longest time so I use that. Also I don't know if you can see but I do have um, I think it's drywall patch. Um, I just added that underneath just for some texture to the cover and just used some of the paper and fishtailed it. So that's the cover. Now let me show you a little bit about it. So if you look at the top it looks pretty full but there still is room for photos. There are six signatures and meaning six page groupings and they're all the same. See there there still is lots of room actually. You see there's there's space in here. That is what the um, inside looks like. And there's the spine, just pretty simple. And I have the same on the back cover. So as I was making this, I was thinking about Father's Day and and thinking, you know, somebody wanted to make something special, maybe not even for Father's Day, but maybe for Christmas, and take all of those old photos they had of their dad and put it all together. This would be a fabulous book to do it with. Um, and I made it so it was easy for four by six photos, but also you could use some of those older photos. Um, photos, these, this photo of my husband when he was younger and his grandfather and mom. Um, so this is three and a half by five. Yeah, three and a half by five. So that's an old photo. But I made the book so you could also use these photos in it. Now, if you had a photo of the guy that you're going to do the book about, um, you could crop it down to fit inside that uh, frame. All right, so I'll take you inside. Um, so right here is just a simple waterfall. And again, a 4 by 6 photo would fit perfectly. So here's a 4 by 6 photo, and that fits. Now this waterfall, it would be a little snug, but it still would work. Now, if you were to use that three and a half by five photo, that would fit in there as well. And a lot of the old photos, too, were four by four. So if you wanted to crop that down, that would work here. So we start, and there's seven pages to this waterfall. I just made it in brown, so when you put the photos on it, it wouldn't take away from the picture. And that goes there. And I love this, this paper with the beards. Um, it's just pretty cute. So I did use some of the cut-aparts that were in the collection. And I 
made it so you could still put a photo underneath. And I have one page in the group of each, um, each grouping that you could use uh, four by six or cut it down or four by four or even if you had a five by seven photo you could put a five by seven on this main page and still see some of the pager paper so um, yeah I was trying to think of what you would use this book for so that's the main page that we start with and then here so I did use a lot of these photo mats um, and again, if you had a smaller picture, that would work real well. And this is a 4x6. Like that. So that's a 4x6 photo, and you could put it on there. looks really nice because now you've got a mat around the photo. And it also helps if somebody is not familiar with a mini album, and you give it to them and say, here, do pictures of your dad. It helps them figure out how to use this kind of book. So a 4 by 6 photo would absolutely fit perfectly there. And then this opens. More room for another picture. And I also show you in the tutorial how to do these swivel tabs. So this just goes like that. And then this opens up. So again, room for a picture. And that opens up also. There's the photo mat for the picture. And then if that's not enough, inside this pocket is just a little book with, booklet with room for four by six photos. And again, if you had the smaller photos, the older ones, they still would fit nice in a book like this. Then there is There is a hidden pocket page, which um, a 5 by 7 photo would fit nicely. Or you could do 5 by 7 and put a smaller photo, you know, a big photo and then a smaller one if you had it. Or two uh, 3.5 by 5 photos. Or even two 4 by 6 photos if you overlapped them a little. You know, sometimes you, you have the room to do that as far as the photo has um, some empty space in it or trees or something like that. All right, and so that goes in there. Now, when I did this, I wasn't sure if I was going to do this hidden page because, again, you can put 120 pictures in. So you just take 12 out. So you still could do over 100 pictures with that. Um, but I did, so you can choose if you want to do that. And then the back page has just a side pocket, which if you had a lot of extra pictures, you could just tuck them in. You, you don't have to mat them if you don't want. There are There is some matting available for you, though. So there's that. There's the mat. So again, I just tried to make it big enough that you could do that. Okay, again, there's room under here to put a photo. And room here for journaling. So this is another set of pages. So here's that main page for a larger photo or a couple of small ones. Photo mat, photo mat. I tried to make some landscape and some portrait. And then here's that swing tab. This opens up. Photo there. It could put a four a square photo here. And room there. And there's the little four picture booklet inside. You know, it's got some interaction, but not so much that it's um, sort of gets in the way of, of checking out the pictures. I'm not going to pull that out all the way, but there is that large photo mat. Okay. Room there. Room for a large picture here with that open. Or even a smaller 
picture if you wanted to. Photo mat, photo mat. Get that in frame so you can see. So I did do some some paper piecing together. Um, it is such a large album and I didn't use more than one paper pad. Um, but I did use some of these plain photo mats, so that was just plain cardstock to go with it. Um, if you had a smaller pad, like an 8x8 pad, that would work as well. You might have to do some extra matting. And I had made these tabs, and I'll show you in the tutorial how I made those swing tabs. Catch that. I tried to make it so the the colors flowed. So there's the larger page for a larger picture or a small one in room to journal photo mat. There we go. There we go. Swivel tab opens up. Room there, and room there, and the booklet as well. So this can be made without any magnets. There are some people who um, may not have them or don't like them. I love this paper. Couldn't figure out if it was masculine enough, but I just thought the colors were pretty. And it does look nice if you had a photo there. And it even could be a photo this way. Right, that fits nice. Photo map. Doesn't that look nice? I mean, it just all flows together real well. So there's the swing tab. There's the little booklet. So here's a hint. So if you were doing this, this album and you got to this set of pages and you didn't have anything that was the guys, maybe you were up to, if you're doing it chronologically, a uh, wedding. You could just take something small or a small photo and put it over that writing. And, and as well, you could use this area and put small photos. It doesn't, just because there's decorative paper and there's room here for a photo, doesn't mean you can't use that to put a small photo if you wanted to. And photo that. I sort of like this barbecue paper, and I put that uh, checkerboard print next to it. Room here to write. I don't know why these are all open. That goes like that. I just love the paper. You know, I wasn't nuts about it when I started. But the, by the time I finished, I thought this was a great use of the paper. And when I put it together, so there are six pages, what the first thing I did is I grouped the papers together with one main paper. So in this case, this was the main paper. This was the main paper. And then I, I put two papers that would go with it as well. And a cardstock. So this one went with it, and this, um, it's a very faint polka dot. That went with the paper as well. So we go like that, close that, and then here's the back pocket. Um, I do like to put a, um, a large pocket with a flap on it for the last page, because that way you can put everything that doesn't fit in the book, in this last pocket. I didn't make it an accordion pocket because just because it's so so wide, there's lots of room for expansion on it. So there is that. 
And again, there's the back page. All right, now let me tell you a little bit about how I'm going to do the tutorial for this. I'm going to do a series of tutorials, and the first one is going to be this page style. So it starts from here with this, with how to do the swivel tab or swing tab, the hidden pocket, and then the side pocket. So that's going to be one. Periodically, so hopefully monthly, I will do another tutorial of a different page style. So when you see the tutorial, you could do a whole album with the one page style. Or do the whole album with one page style and make an extra and hold it. And then at the end of the six tutorials, you'll have six different page styles. So um, it's going to be a good way to learn how to make different page styles for your mini albums. If you're a beginner and want to learn a couple more advanced techniques, or if you're just starting out, this is fabulous. First tutorial that I'm going to do, front cover, the spine, the back cover, and also how to do the hinge. All right, that's what I have for you today. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned, and you'll see an announcement for when that tutorial series will be starting. I hope you subscribe so you're notified when the tutorials do come out. And you'll be the first one to do it. And you can work along with me and get either one mini album done with six pages of the same or do one um, set of pages and then work at your pace. Thanks again for watching.